I'm <laughs> Filipino too. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> but a big, big, big congrats on Linoleum. I love it. It's hypnotically oh. entertaining with a truly satisfying ending. I absolutely adore it. I love it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I feel like this movie is like, people usually say that those last 10 minutes are really, they kind of knock people over, which is oh. nice. Yeah, you know what? I love the script by writer-director Colin West, right? It's a perfect balance of the sweet and the funny and the drama with a little bit of science sprinkled throughout. What did you think when you first saw the script? And was that the reason you got interested in joining the cast? Yeah, I mean, as an actor, I loved uh, the ambition of the project. Um, this was also pre-vaccine portion of the pandemic. So I wasn't even sure we were even going to be able to finish the movie. Um, but I, you know, very selfishly, I was like, oh, my gosh, if this guy hits half of the um, the themes or the emotion that he's hoping to reach in this script, it'll be amazing. And uh, and I wanted to be involved in, you know, it was a great opportunity to play two characters. Um, and, you know, there's something about portraying, uh, you know, even Cameron, which is uh, there's a complexity there that I wanted him to be uh, likable, but also um, maybe get on people's nerves a little bit. So I don't know. No, you hit it. I mean, you're, you're fantastic in your dual roles in Linoleum, the dreamer Cameron and yeah. the confident, a little dickish Kent, <laughs> who won the Science Award called the Copley. Talk yeah. to us about your characters. I mean, how, and how did you find the beating heart of each? Well, I would say with Cameron, um, there is something about, uh, you know, in everyone's life, you know, we there's a moment where you reach a point where you're like, I don't, you know, I might have made some miscalculations, things are are gone awry. Um, you know, we're kind of a, a victim of uh, the situation. And so he he's kind of dealing with that on a career and a relationship standpoint. And, you know, all characters that I portray, I just find myself in them, right? And and justify that. So it's like, I think anyone who's pursued any type of creative thing has eaten so much shit in their life that they, you can access that moment where things are happening at you. And then with uh, Kent, it's, you know, there's part of me that, uh, you know, maybe that's a little bit of, of my father, but it's also a little bit of there's moments of me that are Kent, you know, which is, uh, you know, I've got five kids and I'm kind of a, you got to be the bad cop. Right. Yeah. And so there's, you know, there's versions of, of everyone that kind of exist. And so with Kent and with Cameron, uh, they, they weren't that far off from me. So who would you rather be Cameron or Kent? <laughs> I think Cameron, I think Cameron was, Cameron's a much more evolved um, guy. And I mean, it was so fun. You know, I'm looking at a, an image of you and there's Ray Seahorn there. And it was, there's, you know, Ray added, uh, you know, there was a discourse that occurred when we were filming this because we really wanted to have some some compassion and not play a judgment of any of these people's decisions. So it was great. Thank you for mentioning Ray. I mean, she, you guys make a perfect pair. Even, I mean, actually the entire cast, including your daughter, Caitlin Nacon, who plays your yeah. daughter. I mean, yeah. talk to us about the cast and how you played off of each other. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how, um, you know, I had always been a, a Ray Seahorn fan, um, you know, from a distance, just, you know, the fact that she could do a lot of different things, but she is, she's a real qual, like she's, we're only seeing the beginning of the success she's going to reach because there is, a, you know, this business is very weird and icky. We know, <laughs> but like, there's some people that have the tools and know who they are along with 
this fantastic um toolbox of talent and and i think she's one of those and then the rest of the cast it was it was just so great i mean there's you know and some of the the fish rots from the head and and colin and the producers they they all kind of went to the same high school it's really weird so like there was this um and colin's a really sweet kind of thoughtful guy so there was this tone of like we're gonna do this right yeah and um because you know it's so you're when you work on a film it really becomes a a family and so it was really this nice uh environment and it was it was during a unique period it was pre-vaccine so there was this expectation that if one of us tested positive we're not going to be able to finish this movie yeah wow you know they say comedians make the best dramatic actors and i've been noticing your switch to more serious roles like last year's collide talk to us about your transition and are we going to see more dramatic jim gaffigan soon yeah i mean i you know i selfishly want um the most fulfilling roles and and often i find those in dramas you know it's the more complex the character the more interesting the story i mean i love comedy i mean it's how i make my you know how i afford my lifestyle but i would say that the dramatic roles like in linoleum or even collide or you know uh it's there most often they are dramatic roles and the dramatic roles there's a complexity there's you know it's funner to play somebody who's going through something or somebody who's a bad guy it's just it's it's more fulfilling right but that's not to say though that we will not see any more jim gaffigan stand up so i mean you all oh, yeah. being funny <laughs> no yeah i love stand up and i i think i have to do it and it's you know as a creative person there's an immediacy to that fulfillment i mean i love acting but you get you you know it's not up to you you get hired and you get to do it when you get to do it that's right now going back to linoleum at its heart linoleum is about finding fulfillment in life and appreciating joy and happiness i think from your character cameron to the wife to the daughter that is the running theme i think am i right yeah. in saying that well i would say you know what is unique to linoleum is i mean like most good pieces of art or cinema it presents questions but what i think is unique to linoleum is if you see this movie with a friend you're you're you know and you have that discussion afterwards which is not by the way not a given with films some films you're like yeah great stunts you know what i mean but you will have different takeaways yeah from this uh and i mean that's what we love about the conversations with our friends it's not the exact same conversation and so, you know, two people or five people will have five different takeaways on this. So Jim Gaffigan has found fulfillment in life then, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good ride. I mean, I definitely, I definitely want more acting roles like uh, in Linoleum, but, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm having a good time, you know, it's a good time. Wow. And that's what matters. So a big congrats on Linoleum again, Mr. Jim. A truly smart and heartfelt sci-fi dramedy that must be seen by anyone who loves movies. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank Appreciate you so much. Good luck on everything, okay? And more dramatic roles. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. All right, bye.